Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gavos, joining you for case number 36. And this time around, before we get to start, I'd like to ask your kind-hearted spirits to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application in the view to 500 nurses this year. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos and share this video to at least 10 of your friends and we will pray for your success. Thank you very much in advance for doing so. And before anything else, I'd like to invite you for a free Next Generation NCLEX review on Monday, March 24, 2025. It's going to be via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. onwards, Philippine time. So if you may want to know more about this, could you please text or call 0906201 or visit our website, raygapusreviewsystem.com. And if you are on a tight budget, we have a new program, Unlimited Next Generation NCLEX Comprehensive Review with the 85 verse mentors and, of course, me with our latest NGN sample questions and just an investment of two hours every day. But we're going to finish all concepts and you can sit in until you master all the concepts. If you avail of this program, it's only 8,800 until March 25, 2025. And we have another promo, our way of saying thank you to everyone. Get a free review from us if you process your NPLEX RN application with ITAPS GAPUS. And this is one of those who availed of the ITAPS services. You can get one free review cycle if you process your application with ITAPS GAPUS and our fees are very reasonable. In fact, there are processing um, packages that begin with a price of 45,000 all in, including a free review. So, and this is coming from INSZ Caliceno. I express my gratitude for divine guidance throughout my NPEX review and examination process. My sister referred me to ITAPS for NPEX exam processing. I completed the complimentary review course offered by RAGRS, attending night classes from August 7, 7.15 to 9.15, concluding in November. And due to my employment, I patiently fall behind fell behind, consistently requesting replace via our group chat. I completed the exam on January 16th at 7 a.m., requiring over two hours and 15 minutes. My prayer to complete the exam with 85 questions was answered. Although the exam's adaptive algorithm presented challenges, including four or five case studies, I reviewed the 311th edition textbook in pharmacology several days prior to the exam. I offer my sincere thanks to God, my family for their unwavering support, and RAGRS for providing effective NJN question answering techniques. Thank you very much, Ian Ezekiel, for your kind words. And once again, if you are on a tight budget, you want a high quality next generation NPLEX review program. And if you process your application for NPLEX with us, you get a free review from the Ray A. Gapos Review System. And before we get to start, let me make this advisory. Dr. Ray A. Gapos, that's me. And the mentors of the Ray A. Gapos system are not part of another review center named Gapos Review Academy, where we don't have anything to do uh, with that entity. So please look for my name. It's the Ray A. Gapos Review System. So I'll be talking about three NGN pointers today. And the first one is what to study. The best way to answer this is to learn from certified coaches. Here at the Ray Gapo system, all your coaches and mentors are internationally certified educators. And before we try to dissect the concepts that you need to study, let's first say congratulations to Shinenye Blessing Okoli from Nigeria, who passed the New York Board of Nursing last February 17, 2025. And let us learn from the success recipe of Shinenye's success recipe for the NCLEX. Dr. Ray Gapos and team, I truly do not know how to express my gratitude to you. You have been a vessel God has used to bless my life and the lives of countless nurses worldwide. All I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. I began my NCLEX journey during the second semester of my final year in nursing school. This is a lady who really wants to pass NGN because she started her preparations even before graduation. After making inquiries, I was referred to the Ray Agapas Review System 
by a former Ray Gapos baby. Following my graduation, I attended my first online review class and was overwhelmed by how much essential information I had not learned in nursing school. That's real talk. You don't learn everything from nursing school. You need coaches who are internationally certified to assist you. Initially, my NCLEX preparation was inconsistent, but by God's grace, everything changed when I received my ATP in the first week of December, 2024. From that point on, I took my studies seriously, dedicated six weeks to studying, supplemented by the online comprehensive review, which significantly deepened my understanding of the functional concepts. That's very unique to the Ray Gap system. And for those of you who are in a tight budget, you can process your application through ITEX GAPUS and you'll receive one cycle free comprehensive review. Right before my exam on Monday, February 1, 2025, I attended the three-day quick fix session and utilized the course shells. And I can confidently say that many of the questions I encountered on the NCLEX were taught during that review. I have to repeat that thing. I can confidently say that many of the questions I encountered on the NCLEX were taught during that review. This was my first attempt, and by God's grace, after two comprehensive classes, one boot camp, and two face-to-face -face quick fix classes, I passed in two hours at 85 questions. She's an 85-er. I was terrified going in, but I kept reciting Psalm 46, verse 5, God within her, she will not fail. And recalling Sir Ray's words, do not panic, go slow, and think first syndrome. To Sir Ray and the entire RAGRS team, I'm forever grateful for this victory. Thank you for equipping me with the knowledge, confidence, and faith I needed to succeed. To future Ray Gapos babies, never relent, keep going, trust the system, study the materials diligently, especially the new NCLEX 311. Stay consistent and God will see you through. You've got this. To my friends and family, thank you for your unwavering love, support, and encouragement throughout this journey. Your belief in me keeps me going and I'm truly grateful. And to God Almighty who strengthened, protected, and blessed me with focus, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, to you be all the glory and the honor. Amen. Congratulations. Shinenye, blessing of Kali USRN for the State Board of New York. Now, there are three things that she did. First, she trusted our system. Second, she gave six weeks of her time solely for her preparations. And third, she utilized the materials that mattered the most. And here at the Ray Gapo system, we will provide all three plus more. Trust our system. Okay, on to our next generation NCLEX RN case number 36. And this is about mastitis. But before I move on, let me congratulate our record holder, 66-year-old Miss Flor Villarie USRN from Naga City. She passed the test at age 66. So if she, she was able to do it at age 66, you can do it at a younger age. And that's a challenge, colleagues. And she's from Argo Foundation College in Naga City. She passed last December 2, 2024. Okay, so... Mastitis is the inflammation of the breast characterized by swelling and redness. Note that there's usually inflammation and the pattern is wedge type. When you say wedge type, it is triangular. And this usually occurs in both um, breastfeeding moms and non-breastfeeding clients. So it's very important to assess those factors. Now, what are the symptoms of mastitis? Remember the acrostic breast? There's usually breast swelling and fever that's above 101 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, the temperature is a little high. And then there's redness on a wedge-shaped pattern on the breast. There's excessively painful um, breast during breastfeeding time, especially when it's so distended. And then there's the presence of an abscess and then sore nipples and itching. And of course, there's thickening of breast tissue. Now, if abscess is not present, mastitis goes away, even without treatment in 24 to 48 hours. And pay particular attention to these two important factors. The most common cause of mastitis is the clogging of milk ducts and bacterial infection. So clogging of milk ducts could occur if there's excessive milk production or if there's irregular 
breastfeeding pattern. Now, the risk factors of mastitis include breastfeeding technique and breast pump. If these are not appropriate and if it is irregularly done, it does not empty the breast fully and regularly. Remember, breastfeeding would usually be approximately 10 minutes per breast. And then there's recurrent mastitis. History of previous mastitis could increase the risk for having it again. Excessive pressure um, due to the, press, uh, the use of seat belt that's too tight, brassiere that's too tight, or even a crossbody bag that's too tight. That could potentially increase the risk. And then a typical feeding patterns or when the feeding patterns are irregular. So the breasts are not being emptied on a regular basis that could lead to um, um, accumulation of too much breast milk, especially if the um, nipples are clogged and that could potentially lead to an inflammatory reaction. And then smoking and stress and too much breast milk. Now, what are the things that we need to implement in order to manage mastitis properly? First, if there's pain, then pain relievers are usually given. It could be ibuprofen or acetaminophen. Now, if you want to deal with the cause, if the cause is infection, then the only way to deal with the infection is to administer antibiotics like cephalexine or keflex or tecloxacillin or dicel. Now, these antibiotics are very important because if you don't treat the root cause of the problem, then the symptoms will definitely not go away. Then massaging the breast. And when you're breastfeeding, you begin with problem the problematic side first because you will need to decrease the pressure due to the accumulation of the uh, breast, too much breast milk. So you may want to start with the problematic breast first when breastfeeding. Then ensure adequate breast emptying and that's usually a pro um, accomplish by ensuring that approximately the baby would breastfeed uh, at a duration of 10 minutes for each breast. And then um, this is actually one of those things that we need to resolve. Do we use warm compress or cold compress or ice pack? We can use both, but we can use it alternately. So before pumping, pumping the breast, you can use warm compress to facilitate the discharge of the breast milk through the pump. And then after breastfeeding, you can use ice pack once again to minimize the pain. So before we use what we've learned in our functional concepts discussions to answer a case, let me first share with you some of the feedback of those who use NTEX 311. And this is what they're saying. Okay, parang actual, parang reflection po talaga, sir, of the Quick Fix YouTube. And you could actually watch my Quick Fix and YouTube videos. And 311 po yung questions that I got. So happy I got through the exam successfully. Thank you po, sir, ng marami. And then um, from someone, it's a, she says, Patok, blank also came out. I was like, sir, know what topics would come out. I'm glad I'm a Gapos baby. And then, sincerely speaking, if it were for NCLEX 311, I would not have passed. I went through it the last four days to the exam. The book is amazing. Keep up the good thing of helping as nurses. So the book is amazing. And of course, somebody says, it's legit. The NCLEX 311 for the best. Halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko pong mga standalone questions. Once again, let me repeat that. Halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko pong mga standalone questions. Okay? So, NGN, um, reminder number two, how to study. You have to study by using technology. And here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our own set of technologies. We have our own learning management system. We have our own course shells. We have our own books that are published by internationally renowned publishers. And this is the learning management system that we have here at the Ray Gapo system. It's called the Quick Fix course shells, and it covers all the concepts. And of course, the third reminder, you have to be in a conducive environment. The environment should assist you to keep your focus. Here at the Riga system, we're so proud. This is our NCLEX room where we usually conduct our monthly quick fix session and it's fully soundproof. Of course, with um, air conditioning units. And of course, very clean, separate 
comfort rooms for males and females and the all gender comfort room. And we have a mini student lounge where you have hot and cold water. Okay, and on to our case number 36. Let's use what we just learned. So we have here, a woman who is breastfeeding notices a painful swollen area on one of her breasts. The area feels warm to the touch and there's redness over the skin. She feels fatigued and have flu-like symptoms such as fever, chills, and headache. The inflamed breast feels hard or lumpy. The pain worsens when the baby is breastfeeding. The nurse should carry out which of the following interventions first. So if you're going to analyze the data that were presented, you can actually conclude that the patient is having an infection because of the fever, chills, and headache, the redness over the skin on the breast, and that the breasts are inflamed. Okay, and definitely the woman is breastfeeding. Now, remember that one of the common causes of mastitis could be the transfer of bacteria from the baby's mouth into the breast nipple. So that is in itself a significant data. Now, the question now is the nurse should carry out which of the following interventions first. So all of these, all of these interventions are correct. Massaging the breast is appropriate. Administering ibuprofen will decrease the pain. Administering cephalexin, that's an antibiotic, would address the infection. And breast pumping would definitely decongest the breast. But the question is asking you, which one do you need to do first? I told you a while back that if you want to deal with a problem, you have to target the cause. In mastitis, you have an infection. And to treat the infection, you need your antibiotics. So the answer to this question, administer cephalexin. I just hope you learn from this discussion of case number 36. And I invite you to join our hundreds of thousands of pastors from more than 36 countries worldwide utilizing the Ray Gapus system, okay? So with that, I wish everyone a restful day. And once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus at your service. See you in our next video.